Hi, I'm Rod Anderson. You have all heard the expression, don't blink or you'll miss it. We use that phrase when describing something small that could be missed or easily overlooked. But the phrase, don't blink or you'll miss it, is a phrase that can be used to identify a teaching that has permeated nominal Christianity today and it is connected with the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because ministers, pastors, Bible teachers everywhere are teaching that when Jesus Christ comes, he comes in secret. You don't see him. They call it the secret rapture. It reminds me of those Star Trek Trek episodes and the teleportation machine and the message to Scotty from Captain Kirk, beam me up Scotty. Well, according to many Christians today, they won't be saying beam me up Scotty, but they'll just dematerialize, they'll just vanish away. But the secret rapture teaching, which has been embraced by many popular churches today, gets even worse because it also teaches that there may be two people in a car and one will suddenly dematerialize. But what happens if that person is the person driving the car? What then? Or what happens if the persons, plural, who suddenly do materialize in a commercial jet are the pilot or the co-pilot? What happens to the passengers? Well, you can only imagine. But according to this pure old teaching, everyone else who is left behind will get a second chance at going to heaven a little time later. Whoo! How great is that? Hmm. Something stinks in Denmark, as the old saying goes. Now, you may say, well, if it's in the Bible, shouldn't we believe it? Well, of course we should, but there's only one minor problem. It's not in the Bible. In fact, this false teaching only ended Christianity in the early 1800s. That's about 200 years ago by this man, John Nelson Darby. And now it is nearly everywhere. Did you know? The Bible doesn't even suggest that Jesus will come in secret at the time of his second coming. Did you also know that Jesus even preached against this false doctrine as is recorded in Matthew chapter 24 verses 23 to 27? He says, Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say to you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the earth and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus warned Christians here, If anyone says to you he is come or he is coming in secret, don't believe it. Instruction couldn't be clearer. Let's stay now in Matthew chapter 24. We're going to move down to verses 29 to 31. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, and this is Jesus speaking here, he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now, let's pause for a moment. This passage begins with the words, immediately after the tribulation of those days. So he, Jesus is alerting us that the biblical tribulation of the last days comes for us first, rather, followed by the second coming of Christ, as we're about to read. Then... The word then, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Who is the Son of Man in the Bible? Yes, it's Jesus Christ. And Jesus said when he comes after the tribulation, which is still future, he appears in heaven and he will be seen. People will see him. What is the proof? Well, the Bible says that all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Nothing secretive about the second coming of Christ here. In fact, the passage ends with the words, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Nothing silent, nothing hush-hush when Jesus returns. He comes with power and great glory. Lots of noise and lots of activity as we keep reading the words of Jesus from Matthew 24. He says this, And he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. 
Here in this verse, the angels are active. There is noise and there is commotion as the righteous are being gathered up and the tombs of the dead release the sleeping saints. Certainly nothing secretive about this. And now notice what the Apostle Paul says in regard to the second coming of Christ found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. There is not a hint. There's not a scintilla to suggest that when Jesus comes back, back that he comes back in secret according to Paul see if we go to the first chapter even in the book of Revelation you'll notice the way that John describes the second coming of Christ in terms of its visibility it says behold he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him even those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him even so amen John says every eye will see him is that a secret No, of course not. Someone once said, when something feels wrong, it probably is. And this teaching of the secret rapture does not only feel wrong, it is wrong. But you don't have to be confused about what people say or what people teach if you know what the Bible says. Now, if you go to YouTube, type in my name, Rod Anderson, and the titles, The Second Coming of Jesus Christ, there you will watch a full presentation that I gave on Christ's return, which explains away the abominable heresy of the secret rapture in more detail and explains more fully what the Bible actually says in relation to the second coming of Christ. Now, in addition to these things, I want you to have a free series of Bible reading guides called The Orchard Faith of Jesus Studies. By utilizing these guides, you will gain an understanding of the most important teachings in the Bible. They're free and they are easy to use. And all you have to do to get the material is send me an email with your name, postal address and phone number two, info at theorchardmelbourne.org.au, that is info at theorchardmelbourne.org.au, or go to our website, theorchardmelbourne.org.au, and go to the tab mark, contact us, and follow the prompts, and you will have them in no time at all. Well, that's it for now. I'm Rod Anderson. Remember, the truth has nothing to fear from investigation. Goodbye for now.